find the President of the United States of America a government book that does not have the picture of the President of the United States of America that we currently have. And so, I can understand a math book, right? Math doesn't change too frequently. But you know what? History and government change all the time. And so there's no reason why we shouldn't be investing in making sure that our kids get the most up-to-date education that they deserve. So, so I'm sorry for making that long, but that, that is the bill that hopefully it passes and, uh, and, 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 and helps us generate money that we need for, for education. Good evening, Senator Kewen. I just want to uh, let you know that you did an awesome job tonight. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Also, also I'm not your constituent, but um, I have family and friends that are, and there's a lot of Salazars all over the state. So uh, you better vote for the bills that are my bills. But, <laughs> but what I'm telling the, the the people in Carson City, uh, exactly the same thing, and all the, especially the other side of the of the aisle, that um, unions will never be busted. Grace, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, Grace, I used to be her representative when I was an assemblyman. Uh, she, uh, you know, I was uh, she was one of my constituents. And uh, let me tell you, she's been fighting the good fight for years. She's been going up to Carson City and lobbying. She would call me, she would email me. Um, she would sometimes uh, call me and give me an earful like my mother would. Um, but Grace, thank you so much because of all that effort, we're able to pass some good bills in Carson City and kill some bad ones. So thank you so much. My name is Marissa Pancos. I go to the school and I right. Okay, yo, Cougars. Yeah. My question was about um, the bill you were speaking about saying that it will help families, um, more specifically single income families, but what about like multi-income families who are in the same situation? Like, will they have similar, you know, equal help or, you know, funds? Uh, which bill are you specifically? Is it the, the one for college um, affordability uh, or yeah. child care? No, uh, child care, yes. Okay. So actually for both of them, I, I would say the same response. Um, these are need-based programs. What does that mean? That means that these funds are not going to be able to be taken advantage uh, by people who, kind of like myself, I make an okay salary, right? I make a livable wage. Um, once I have kids, I don't need, you know, uh, government assistance to be able to pay for my child care. Uh, but there's still a lot of families out there who have t two jobs that still cannot make ends meet, that still cannot pay for, um, for their child care or afford college. So these are gonna be need-based uh, grants. They're gonna be taken advantage of uh, by, by families who are single income or double income, uh, but still cannot make ends meet. My name is Cammie Lee, and I was just wondering if you're gonna do anything like about bullying or something like that? That's a, actually a good one. You know what, thank you so much. What's your name? Cammie, thank you. You know what, actually, precisely um, today, we passed SB 504. A lot of things happened today, by the way. Uh, I, I was at the legislative building at 6.30 in the morning this morning. Uh, and so, uh, you know, before coming here today, before flying down, uh, we had a very successful day in Carson City. I think today has been one of the most successful days we've had recently. Uh, again, there's still a lot of debate going back and forth about you know the, the funding and where we're going to get the revenue and so on. But one of the good things that happened today was uh, SB 504, which basically creates a zero tolerance policy against bullying in the Clark County School District and in our school system here in the state of Nevada. Zero tolerance. And look, I, I don't share with I don't share this with a lot of people, but I. I when I came from Mexico, when I was eight years old, I couldn't speak English at all. And so, kids would make fun of me by the way I would pronounce certain words. Like, you know, if you confuse the word beach, like going to the beach, with another word. Right? Or yellow and jello. It's two different things, right? So I would get bullied by a lot of kids because I couldn't pronounce certain words correctly. Well, guess what? I'm a state senator now. I have nothing to do. 
What I'm saying is that I had people who stood up for me, and there's a lot of great teachers who stood up for me. My father, my mother, who went to the school. And by the way, parental accountability is important for, for the parents who are here to get involved with the kids' education. Get involved with the kids' education. Go to their school, talk to their teacher, talk to the principal. Uh, ask him what you, what you as a parent could be doing better so your son or daughter uh, is getting the right education and that they're not being bullied. Because again, a lot of these times, a lot of kids don't, they don't speak up. You just, you know, you see the kids, they come home and they're depressed, they go in their room, they get quiet. You know, you know there's something wrong. And it's your responsibility as a parent to go to the school or to have a conversation with your son or daughter and see what's wrong. But again, I'm very happy that this bill has been passed because there should be zero tolerance for bullying at all levels, at all levels. Good evening, Senator. My name is Tracy Franklin. Um, aside from being making sure that they have adequate supplies, what else do you plan to do to make sure that students in District 10 um, are, are successful? That's a good question. So making sure that the programs exist, uh, not only for the kids, uh, but the, the proper training for the teachers who are teaching uh, our kids. Because again, we could just throw money at a problem. But if we're not training or recruiting teachers that can teach some of these ELL students, for example, those 70,000 students that we have, then they're not going to be effective. So we, we, we're, we're making sure that we're, we establish um, training programs for the teachers. Uh, we're making sure that we reduce the class sizes so they can have more personalized time. Uh, and many other things that are included in the bill. Uh, but again, we're, it's not just about throwing money at the problem, it's also making sure that the policies are there uh, that will enable the teacher, the parent, the administrators as well, uh, to be able to create the environment for our kids to learn. Uh, and you know what, the other thing is creating reading centers. Uh, I'm sorry, just going back to it, I just look, uh, my notes I'm looking at. Uh, the reading centers and also extend the school year by a few days uh, to be able to accommodate uh, some of their needs. So thank you for asking that. Hello. Hi there. So um, prior to starting my business, I researched good states to start the business path. And I chose to move here to Nevada, so I've only been here a few months. Now. Um, my business is not non for profit, but it's to support individuals with disabilities. My question is, uh, I've had some challenges finding out what the state's plan is. There are a lot of states that are closing down um, state facilities or not reopening more group homes, but supplying more funds for families to support their children at home. Um, like someone mentioned earlier, uh, she's a caregiver for an elderly person. Is the state of Nevada do you guys have a plan to support uh, mothers and you know fathers or caregivers that have children with disabilities or elderly parents they want to support instead of uh, putting them in a group home or nursing and care facility? Right, that's actually a really good question. Um, I actually just met with a group of caregivers. Uh, I think they were from the SCIU uh, just a few a few weeks ago in my office. Um, you know what I. I I'm not even going to pretend to try to answer your question. There is a bill uh, that they were advocating for. I can't remember the, the, the number of the bill, but uh, let's talk after this. I'll give you my contact information and I'll send you the information. Uh, and uh, I'll make sure that we get uh, more information to you on that. Okay, we're going to take two more and then we'll be done. Senator Kuhn, Lisa Montina, teacher. How are you? Um, my question has to do with the funding cuts that we've had over the last decade. And with the funding cuts over the last decade, how we have this privatization model at this point that seems to be pushed, how you and your Democratic caucus are planning on protecting privatization and fighting back against charters so that our students actually can continue to have public schools that are viable in their areas, especially for those in uh, poverty and students of color. First of all, uh, thank you for all your advocacy. I know you're another one. And I see a lot of you. I don't want to single people out, but I know you've been advocating a lot on a lot of the education issues. Uh, by the way, Lisa is one of our, our teachers here in the Clark County School District, uh, who is one of the most active lobbyists in Carson City. Non-paid lobbyist. She's not getting paid to be up there. Uh, and she's still lobbying, so thank you so much for doing that. And, and all I can say is that thanks to your advocacy, we're able to defeat 
or to amend some of these bills that you're talking about uh, to, uh, to make sure that they, you know, our public education system doesn't take a toll uh, and that our students at the end of the day don't take a toll on that. So um, let's continue working together. Thank you. Last question. Senator McEwen, thank you so much for your years of struggling, for people who struggle, and for struggling for immigrants' rights. Um, what is the reason, what's the justification for having, I believe, 18 vice superintendents who make over $180,000 in Clark County? What's the point of that? How can you afford books? How can you afford decent treatment for teachers within a productive and, and, and professionally nurturing environment that cares about the kids, that cares about the educational community when you have that type of uh, salary hierarchy? Well, that's, that's uh, and honestly, look, I, I, you know, I'm not in a position to uh, uh, speak on behalf of the Clark County School District or some of those uh, administrators who work there. Uh, but all I can say is that you know, instead of continuing giving pay increases to administrators, we should be paying teachers what they deserve to be paid. That is my opinion. That, you know, people like my father, my father's a teacher as well, my girlfriend, and some of the teachers who are here. Um, my girlfriend started making 30000 a year when she first started. I mean, she couldn't even pay her mortgage or her, 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 her bills. Uh, it's not a livable wage. If you think about it, $30,000 a year is about $15 an hour. If you have children, if you have a family, if you have a mortgage, if you have a car payment, if you have to pay for their, you know, their, their materials, you can't do it with $30,000 a year. It is not a livable wage. So uh, I believe that those teachers who are qualified, who have gone through college, who have gone their degree, who have put in their hard work, who are showing results, um, should definitely get paid more. And so with that, with that being said, everybody, I, I want to give just a minute uh, to my good friend uh, who took the time to be here, uh, the councilman that I just produced, uh, Isaac Barron. Uh, I want to give him an opportunity to say a few words, so please give him a welcome. Thank you very much, David. Actually, I, I, I know Ruben.